the healing tip number three. And for this one, I'm going to ask a riddle, not a riddle, a question. <laughs> it's a quiz. So what kind of bath can you take that will lower your blood pressure, oxygenate your brain, reduce stress, improve sense of well-being, reduce negative emotions, increase natural killer cell activity and lymphocyte reduction, which is to say improve immune function, reduce cortisol levels, improve length and quality of sleep, reduce blood glucose, reduce inflammation. What kind of bath do you think you can take? I think a lot of people are probably be thinking like, oh, Epsom salt baths or something like that, which is another low cost healing tip, by the way. Epsom salts are great, <laughs> but mm -hmm. that's not what I'm thinking of. This is what I'm thinking of. Ooh, nice. Forest bathing, which you may or may not have heard of. There was this amazing video that was circulating on Facebook. I can't remember for the life of me who made it. Maria, did you ever see it? It was about forest bathing. I've seen some videos. I don't know if it's the same one that you saw. Yeah. Japan, there was a right. Yes, yes, such an inspirational video. I mean, it's almost worth going to Google like Japan force bathing video because it's inspirational. But basically, and this is the simple low cost healing tip number three, the tip is to get in nature. And the reason why is because, you know, it's again, it's such a simple thing. People are like, does it really matter? Like, who cares? Is this gonna help heal my child? And the the science is beginning to melt. Like people are really looking at this, like putting your body into the forest actually has amazing health benefits. And I would um, highly encourage you all to take a look at the literature, the medical literature out, that's out there, because forest bathing, putting yourself in nature, has real, tangible, measurable results that um, are important if you're on the, on the healing journey. So this is a great place to start. This is a, a review study that was published this year in the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health. Shinrin Yoku, Forest Bathing and Nature Therapy, a state of the art review. And what these review studies do is they look at all the past research that's been done in this particular area and sort of synthesize the results. Highly encourage you, write this down, take a look at it, read it, because it's really, it's, it's informational, um, sorry, informative, but it is mind blowing about how something so simple can be so impactful. And again, this just came out this year. So that's why you're hearing a lot about forest bathing or nature therapy. So the tip is that you have to get in nature, basically. Do whatever you can to get in and around and surrounded by nature. Um, I want to share another story about how nature heals. So um, there is a family that I know, and um, their child had severe asthma. And this child was always hooked up to a nebulizer, you know, couldn't really do much because, you know, he was constantly having ER visits and was really impacted by his asthma. Um, and then one time the family had, who had just had it, they, you know, they just had it with their child being so sick and they just didn't know what else to do. And they just said, screw it. This is no way to live. So they decided to take a cruise. And what they found miraculously was what, when their child was on the cruise ship, he didn't have asthma at all. Like, and before he had been doing like, you know, ER trip after ER trip after ER trip, constant nebulizer treatments. He didn't even need the nebulizer treatments. So what happened, it turns out, is that the child was outside on the deck, breathing in the fresh salt air. And apparently this was really the trick for overcoming a major obstacle in his asthma treatment and, and um, management. And so the family actually, took this learning, again, being a growth mindset, what do I have to learn from this, right? And they discovered that salt caves and uh, exposing their son to salt air was miraculous for them. A major, major, um, helped them overcome a major hurdle with regard to their asthma. And you know, it's funny because they used to use these, these kinds of approaches where they would take people who were sick and they would have them in you know, sanitariums where they would put them by the seashore. Mm -hmm. to breathe in the fresh salt air and out in natural sunlight. Like sunlight used to be a natural part of healing. What you did when you were convalescing and you needed to recover, you'd be out in the salt air and you'd be out in the sun. So, you know, the lesson here is that nature absolutely has the capacity to heal, but you got to be in it. You can't be away from it. So then of course, this begs the question, <laughs> what if I don't live near nature? Like what if I live here? Um, and I think the answer to that is that, you know, all of these things, like trying to get back in rhythm with, uh, with nature is difficult in the modern world, but there are always things that you can do. 
So here's an example. So even if you live in an urban environment, you can do things to bring some nature into your life. So here's an example of, you know, indoor plants that are helpful at detoxifying and helpful to purifying the air. And all you have to do, there's tons of them out there. There's not just six. There's literally tons of plants that, that help purify indoor air. Just Google it. Um, and then, you know, there's a, a million other things to do that if you live in an urban setting, you can make an effort to get out to parks. And you know, a lot of cities have parks. Like if you live in New York City, it matters that you visit Central Park. It's so good for your health. And while you're there, take your shoes off. Mm-hmm. And um, you can always do things to bring the outside in, you know, grow, grow house plants. Um, you can grow window boxes and grow vegetables in your window. Anything that you can do, even just getting outside into the sunshine, even if it's an urban setting, play outdoors in the snow when it when it's uh, snowing. If you live in an area where there's snow, you know, even just touching the soil and the plants in parks, it's all meaningful and it all counts and it all matters. Again, these one of these things is so simple, but people don't think it matters. So while you're getting in nature, like I just mentioned, it's really important to touch nature and to earth or ground. And and this is one of the things I've been watching with great interest for years because maybe like, I don't know, maybe a decade ago, I heard about earthing as like a thing (laughs) that, you know, getting out and putting your feet, bare feet on the ground is actually healthful. And there wasn't a lot of research on it when I first heard about it. And so I kind of dismissed it. Like, uh, like really, like, is it that important? And it turns out it is really important. And the science on earthing and grounding is real and they're doing all kinds of cool research on it right now. So the, the first of these bullet points I have listed on this slide here are some of the headers, the titles of different research articles that have been published recently. And I love them because they're really showing positive healing results just by connecting to the earth. So the first one, which says grounding improves vagal tone in preterm infants, they literally took preterm infants and put them on grounding mats. And I don't know if you've ever heard of grounding mats. There's all kinds of things that um, that you can do to connect yourself, even when you're indoors by an electrical current to the ground. Um, and they found that this actually improved the bagel tone in preterm infants. Um, and then there's a couple other ones here that you can take a look at. The effects of grounding on inflammation, the immune response, wound healing, and prevention and treatment of chronic inflammatory and autoimmune diseases. And the results of this study were amazing. So if you look at the the two text boxes on the bottom here, you can see some of the results. So on the left, grounding reduces pain and alters the number of circulating neutrophils and lymphocytes and also affects various circulating chemical factors related to inflammation, published in the Journal of Inflammation, 2015. And this exciting one, which is again, kind of like a review study, this body of research has demonstrated the potential of grounding to be a simple, natural, and accessible clinical strategy against the global epidemic of non-communicable degenerative inflammatory related diseases, which is exactly what's affecting our kids today. They are experiencing an epidemic of non-communicable degenerative inflammatory related diseases and grounding helps. So let your kids get outside and let them go barefoot. Let them like literally hug a tree. I make my kids do this. I'm like, go hug a tree because (laughs) it sounds ridiculous. And a decade ago, I would have laughed at myself for even suggesting that, but there's real science behind it and it does have healing effects. 